Okay, uh, in the last video we saw that the most significant digit version when we were sorting this list of numbers uh, we needed to, uh, in, when we sorted by the first digit, the most significant digit, all the 200s became before the 300s, the 300s before the 400s but then when we want to go further sorting in that each bucket we have to make sure we sort the 200 separately and the 300 separately we don't want to take a number from 300 and put it before a number from 200 because this second digit separate from lower, that doesn't make sense now we're going to see the least significant digit version and see how that behaves. So, least significant digit version means you go in this order. You start the least significant digit and so on and so forth. Least significant digit here is these ones. And um, you have what are the lowest ones? Zero. And so when I take this number with the zero here, it's 720, go to the beginning. What's the next one? So number 355. Then you have two seven a six. The six number went there. Then you have the two sevens. And then you have the two nines. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're done with the least significant digit. We go to the next least significant digit, which is the second digit from the right. I have not mentioned any detail of how I did the sorting based on the least significant digit. We'll come to this detail later, but one detail has to be mentioned right now is the sorting must be stable. If you recall, sorting algorithm is called stable or has stability. If there are two equal keys, then the key, let's say two keys, four and four prime, right? Four in red color and four in blue color. If four in blue color is before four in red color in the original array, in the sorted array, the four with blue color should also be before the four with red color. Um, so, when we look at these digits, we have two twos, right, go to the lowest. This two comes before this two in the array, so we should keep this two before the other two. The other one is. Notice that I'm not made any, did I, I didn't make any bucket. Is this going to work? Let's check. Um, this three comes before this three. Uh, then what do we have? Then we have three fives. This is this. Notice that so far the, the array seems to be very far from being sorted because the 700 is before a 300, then an 800 in the middle, then 300. And all kinds of things are happening. Anyway, let's go on. Let's start by the next significant digit, which in our example is the last. Uh, digit. Again, we have to maintain the stability of the sort. We have threes, fours, a six, and a seven. Really. So threes, and this three is before this three. So we write that guy before this guy. Then you have two fours. This four came before the other four. And then we have a six. Then we have a 7, then we have an 8. Lo and behold, the array is sorted. It's almost like magic. Um, yeah, I mean, the intermediate stages are very horrible looking, unlike the most significant bit version. The most significant bit version, just one iteration, you know, the numbers are pretty good. They're all the 200s are before 300s, 300s are before 400s, and so on and so forth. Here, it's a, it's a mess. It's a mess. But look at this. The final thing is sorted. I didn't have to maintain any buckets. If you want to think about it, each number is a bucket by itself. I don't have to worry about putting boundaries between numbers and doing within a bucket. Um, okay, how does this work? And what's the uh, complexity of doing this? And how do you do each iteration? Okay, since there are very few distinct digits, right? There are only 10 different digits, that means, right? Imagine this list was not just seven numbers, it was one billion numbers, but all three digit long. Okay? There are only ten possible values of, of the first digit, of the lowest digit. So what you want to do? You want to do something like counting sort or something like bucket sort, which runs in linear time. So you do a linear time sorting of this, gives you this. Then a linear time sorting of this gives you this. Then a linear time sorting of this gives you this. So the complexity of this is 
n d where n is the number of numbers size of the real estate, right? Let me write dm if you don't mind. Not that it matters, but and d is the number of digits. Okay? Again, why is that? Each sort is linear and we do D of them. Okay? So, um, and we have to make sure that that sorting, the counting sort whatever it is, is stable. Is stable. Um, now, um, the, uh, uh, the complexity, theta dn, that looks linear unless d happens to grow as n grows in a way that's... So, when would this sorting be preferable over quick sort, merge sort, or some n log n sort? Uh, is if d... So, radix d significant digit version is better then uh, let's say quick start when the d the number of digits is much less than log n if the number of digits is log n it is the same performance but so again think of it this way um, billion numbers the log of that base 10 the log here of course has to be the base that you're working with i was doing it in base 10 sorting log of billion to base 10 is 9 if there if each digit is potentially up to 9 or more digits long the performance will be the same as quick sort but let's say there are billion digits there are billion numbers sorry, sorry and they are all 3 digits long 3 or less ok so there will be a 0 at the beginning uh, if it's 2 digit number then it's going to be the performance will be something like 3n right or 3cn where cn is the cost of engaged attrition so you you this uh, sorting algorithm uh, beats quick sort. It actually has linear time performance if D is a constant that doesn't go with n, and that D constant is less than log n. And you might ask, are we violating the theorem somehow? No, we are not, because this algorithm it is it doesn't work by comparing 329 to 657. It compares them within digits. So it's not exactly what we did in the theorem where we assume we are comparing a cell to a cell, cell to a cell. It, it employs counting sort along the way, and counting sort, as we discussed in the counting sort lecture, is not a comparison based sort algorithm. It's some kind of you know a bucket algorithm. Okay. Um, all right. So a little bit more about uh, least significant uh, digit version. I will talk about in the next video and give a demonstration. Okay.